Hi, I've got an exciting one for you today. Check out this. It's the Kronos High Speed Digital Camera. This is a uh, Kickstarter done by David Kronstein, aka uh, Tesla 500. If you're not subscribed to his uh, YouTube channel, you definitely uh, should. Fellow video blogger. And he's running a Kickstarter. It should be uh, live by the time you watch this video, hopefully. And it's a 2500 US dollar high speed digital camera and he's developed this all on his own over the last uh, 10 years he's been experimenting with uh, high speed digital cameras and there's many videos on his website actually designing various uh, prototypes of this thing so this is the real deal unlike uh, a lot of kickstarter and other bloody indiegogo crap and stuff like that this is a real prototype dave uh, sent me this this is lucky seven it's upside down all the electrons are going to fall out so let's take a quick look at this thing and see what we've got. This is a prototype uh, unit. It's got prototype, so beta uh, software, everything else. So please bear that in mind. And just a disclaimer, uh, I believe Dave is letting me uh, keep this for use on the uh, blog for doing some high-speed photography. It'll come in very handy, um, so just bear that in mind. But as usual, I don't let uh, that affect my reviews whatsoever. Now, 2,500 US bucks might sound a lot for a Kickstarter camera, but this is a game-changing high-speed camera. Nothing else on the market touches the resolution is in this thing. It can do uh, 1280 by 1024 at 1057 frames, frames per second. That's the uh, slowest speed, right up to uh, 21,649 frames per second for 640 by 96. And it's got, say, like a usable, say, 640 by 3. 60 at 5900 frames per second so wow and in the hand it feels really solid it's uh machined aluminium as you can see here um a beautiful design it's got a massive five inch screen at the back and if you compare the size of this thing to my uh sony rx100 uh mark IV, that's my other uh, high speed uh camera this thing is a beast look at it wow and we've got a standard SD card slot here. You can save uh, H.264 video too. Um, we've got ourselves a shutter button, power button, uh, recording and uh, recharge light and a microphone on the top. And also the uh, speaker down here. The firmware that I've got at the moment does not have the microphone or the audio enabled, but it uh, certainly will. It's got a beautiful jog shuttle for playback. We'll see in a second. And on the side here, Dave's thought of absolutely everything to make this a really great... Uh, industrial high-speed uh, camera we've got uh, microphone external microphone line in you've got to have external mic fantastic uh, headphone we've got a real B and C here for the uh, external trigger input and also the frame um, strobe sync output as well fantastic gigabit Ethernet uh, external power you can actually run the camera from the external uh, 40 watt power input fantastic for you know a dedicated lab uh, setups and measurements and stuff like that you don't want to be dicking around with you know trying to take out an external battery and all that sort of crap um external full resolution hdmi to hook up to an external monitor if as if the building five inch wasn't good enough here um external usb and uh e sada and uh, usb mini b as well as um standard uh, phoenix contact uh ones for uh, once again external trigger um and isolated external trigger as well that could be handy for uh grounded system installations and stuff like that and uh just because two one meg sample per second adc inputs <laughs> terrific why not and a micro SD card slot for the firmware, because you can do a firmware updates in this thing, of course. And uh, the tripod uh, mount is directly in line with the uh, sensor. Fantastic. And the battery is uh, one of these standard uh, Nikon uh, ones, apparently, you can get uh, 1.7 hours uh, regular operation, or as I said, external uh, plug pack operation as well. And we've got a back focus uh, adjustment as well, depending on the type of uh, lens that you're actually installing. Neat, he's thought of everything. So I really like the uh, battery contacts directly on the PCB down in there. Really neat solution. And we've got a temperature control fan on the front and yes, that does allow uh, continuous operation. Lots of vents in here. Um, I'm not sure in terms of like, you know, dust and stuff uh, getting in in uh, long-term use. We'll have to uh, see about that. And sensor porn, no, sorry, I don't know what one is in there. Um, maybe Dave can uh, tell us that. And it's a standard uh, C-mount lens interface as well. 
And of course, the C or a CS mount uh, lens is industry standard for uh, you know security cameras, microscopes, you know other high-speed industrial uh, cameras and things like that. So he's really uh, chosen the correct interface there, and he's supplied this lens. It won't actually come with a lens; you'll have to buy your own. Um, so he's just given me a uh, second-hand uh, Fuji uh, camera, uh, you know, security-type camera uh, lens on this thing. But this should allow us to get this puppy up and running. And this is called the Kronos with a C, and given that Dave's uh, name is Kron with a K, and it, his company is Kronos Technology, I reckon it should be named the Kronos with a K. And the fan in it is uh, temperature control, but uh, just during normal operation, it is relatively annoying. It's not super loud, but enough to be annoying. So for a one-man band to do actually uh, develop a Kickstarter high-speed camera like this, and, you know, a reasonably professionally feeling one, I mean, you know, he doesn't have the million dollars to put into uh, tooling that your, you know, your Canons and your Nikons and uh, companies, Sonys and companies like that have, but, you know, it's, it's really surprising surprisingly well built and well designed for like a you know a one man band do it yourself kickstarter it's fantastic more than adequate uh for the job of like you know an industrial type high speed camera and considering this is made in the tens and will be made in the hundreds or maybe uh you know thousands if it goes really well you know you can't put a million bucks into uh, uh tooling and everything like that but i like the uh machined alloy case it feels really good it's just an issue with uh grip you know he's done his best with the grip but yeah it's you know it's not as good as a professional uh consumer type camera in that regard and nor do you expect it to be really and it's got four machine holes on the front here i'm not sure what they're for uh probably for uh you know uh third party type uh adapters or any sort of you know custom lens or some other adapter nice touch now it does take a while to boot up and uh, we'll show you that working here. Here we go, we'll switch it on. I think it takes about 30 seconds or something like that. I'll do it in real time. Now, one of the problems I have with this, it does have like a grip, but you can't just hold it like that. Um, you know, you really have to get your thumb over this knob. So that's one of the problems I've had um, is that, you know, like to hold it like that without it falling, slipping out of your hand, you've got to put your hand, your thumb uh, is a lot of pressure on that knob. So, but it's, it feels really sturdy, that knob, but hey, that's an issue. And also the capacitive touchscreen is so close to there, I found myself accidentally uh, touching these buttons and uh, starting recording and, and doing the black uh, calibration and stuff like that. Now, I'm not sure if you'll be able to see this clearly. When I first turned it on, um, I'm getting all these speckles and stuff all over the image until I figured out what that actually was. That's actually the focus peaking. Fantastic. I love focus peaking and zebra uh, stripes as well. My two favorite uh, features in a camera and it's got that absolutely brilliant. So that was just showing where we're in focus um, on this particular one so here we go i can bring the focus there we go focus in and out and you should see that change you can probably see those cables over there there we go those cables on the bench changing nice touch now as far as the user interface goes here i really like it it's easy to get up and running you've got your record settings here and then you can choose your uh default all your different uh settings down here frame rate you know i'm gonna uh you know i might do a lot of my testing at uh, uh 1280 by 720 720p 1500 frames per second at, whoa brilliant for two and a half grand this is fantastic we can do our uh, gain of course you saw that uh, image before we can up our gain and you'll actually see the resolution change now we've got the black bars top and bottom and we can adjust our shutter by just dragging that bar down there like that perfect for uh, setting up of course you want to you set up your experiment and then you adjust your uh, shutter so that you're just not overexposing terrific and we've got a focus aid so we can simply go in there it expands the center and we can play around with our focus beautiful
and the set white balance is a single touch. You put a white balance card in front and your regular camera stuff and your black calibration too, uh, you want to uh, completely block out the lens to do that. The problem with these, these are single touch and I've accidentally hit the black cow before and it takes like 20 seconds to do that. It'll be faster in the, um, in the final firmware uh, version. But yeah, just annoying to have those as a single touch. I'd like a confirmation on those, especially when you're holding it and your thumb can easily accidentally touch those buttons. Of course, a high-speed camera is absolutely useless without extensive external uh, triggering. So here's our um, IO1, two, three different uh, external. We've got the isolated input down here, so we can uh, trigger the voltage threshold. It's got 20 milliamp pull-up, 2 milliamp pull-up, debouncing. Fantastic, exactly what you want. And somewhat confusingly, and I didn't get this the uh, first time, how to do uh, pre and post triggering. Well, it's in the trigger menu here, and uh, you set the number of frames. So you can't set percentage. I've talked to Dave about this and he said, yeah, you know, he'll probably add that in the firmware. Um, so if you want to uh, capture, of course you want to capture things after your trigger event, both before and after, you have to manually set the number of frames in here you want to capture and the number of frames will de be dependent upon the maximum resolution. And we can have our B and C output the uh, frame sync as well. Terrific for uh, laboratory uh, measurements and stuff like that. Everything's thought of here. Now one of the main gripes I had uh, when I first used this, and it was a little bit uh, confusing, and Dave's going to fix this in the final uh, firmware, I think, and uh, it doesn't actually tell you how many frames it can actually uh, capture. When you actually uh, press record, here we go, so we're actually uh, recording now, I'm just sticking my hand in front of that, and it's continuously recorded in a loop in a uh, DDR3 buffer, a memory buffer, I believe it is, and it won't actually uh, save things to the SD card, of course, um, because they're too slow, until you uh, trigger and then it stops. And when you actually stop it and then go back into play here, it'll actually tell you how many frames you've actually got uh, there. So for my current resolution, which is 1280 by 720, I've got 6,205 frames. So it'll always capture those 6,205 frames. And in the current firmware by default, uh, which I found confusing, uh, but I believe it'll be fixed in the final version, is that when you use the shutter button on top, there is no post-trigger uh, delay in this thing. So with the shutter button on top is actually the stop button. But if you actually externally trigger it in the current uh, firmware, then you can actually do uh, post capture post-trigger data using the uh, trigger delay with the number of frames that you set here. Now I have actually found a bug in the current firmware and that's to do with the uh, battery gauge. I've had it just uh, die on me and Dave's confirmed, yeah, there's uh, battery uh, gauge issues. He's looking for another battery and stuff like that. But eh, that's only on my prototype unit. And I'm sure the final version will have like a, uh, you know, a proper flash uh, screen, boot screen and all that sort of jazz. So don't worry about that. So one of the annoying things at the moment, and uh, I complained to Dave and he said he might uh, fix this, is that the shutter button does not start the recording. It only stops it uh, or the external uh, trigger will stop it. So let's try the external trigger. And we, if we press record like this and external trigger, bam, like that. There we go. It just stopped and then we can go back in and play that back. So that external trigger can work with anything, but because I've got like a 20 milliamp uh, pull up at the moment and I've inverted it, um, just shorting it out. So basically grounding the input will actually uh, stop the recording. And then of course, any uh, post uh, capture data that you've specified in here, it won't stop instantly. If you have a value in there, it'll stop X number of frames later. And I'm not sure if you can see that, but I'm uh, recording outside now here in uh, quite bright light, not direct sun, it's a little bit overcast and it's really difficult to uh, see that screen. It's, it's okay directly on, but if you try and uh, um, get at an angle like that, yeah, not terrific. So not the best LCD outside, I'm afraid. And thermally, I've actually had this uh, recording for 30 minutes uh, continuously. You can see the, oh, maybe see the light is still, <laughs> recording light's still on the uh, top, because as I said, it'll have a continuous buffer. Um, coming out of the vent, they're only talking 35, 35 degrees or thereabouts. Granted, it is, I have got the aircon on here in the lab, but uh, yeah, thermally, this thing is just fine. No heating, uh, overheating issues whatsoever. I was just uh, shooting outside before in 35 degree heat. Not a problem.
Now, of course, the problem with high-speed photography is that you need a metric buttload of light. And uh, no wonder Dave is actually on his uh, YouTube channel has actually designed the world's brightest LED light for uh, all his high-speed uh, photography stuff. So I'll link that one down below. Now, if I turn the gain all the way up, and uh, that's my aperture that I'm closing now, I can close it right off of right off of course but it starts to get really noisy if i want to get everything uh in focus here so yeah it's just high speed photography is really tricky you must have a ton of light um generally that means outdoors if you're indoor you need hundreds of watts thousands of watts of light directly on your subject one of the things uh, missing from this, by the way, is the uh, gain setting. I'd like to see a few more uh, settings on the screen than just the uh, resolution, frame rate, and uh, battery level, and uh, exposure there. But anyway, if I turn my lights on here, um, I couldn't get it um, in focus before, but now, because I've got the uh, studio light on and 0 dB gain, I can turn the aperture down like that, and... Of course, I can adjust my uh, shutter like that, and I can now see that pretty much the ring, I'm not sure if you can see it, but the ring is in focus, and that's exactly what I want. So beautiful. Now it's ready to shoot. Okay, so I'm going to try and get a high-speed shot of a uh, water drop here. I've got some uh, red food coloring, and I'm going to press record, and go for it so now it's armed ready to go and as soon as i drop this in uh then i'm and i'm happy with the shot um i'm only going to be recording about four seconds at this uh resolution that's the maximum then i press the uh stop shutter button on the top and we can replay it so here we go Now it hasn't saved that to the uh, SD card at all, so we have to go into the playback here, and the playback is very nice. So the, currently it's 60 frames per second, and we can just drag this slider. Well, there we go. We can see the drop. Didn't... Oh, yeah, yeah, you can see the ripples coming out. There we go. And you can adjust the playback like that, and you can do it like this as well, just by holding that down. Look at that. Or, so you go just before it impacts, and you can use the jog shuttle as well. Look at that. Beautiful. <laughs> Fantastic. Now you'll notice that we uh, actually recorded 4,365 frames there, and uh, if you save that, if you just hit save, saves it to the SD card, fine, but it can take several minutes to actually do that. It saves it quite slowly. Anyway, I'll just show you the settings. Here we go, we can uh, set up our encoder H.264 uh, profile and all that goodness where we're going to save it to, and I believe you can re remote save it to uh, remote uh, drives when you've got the Ethernet and all that hooked up. I haven't actually uh, tried that, I'm not going to try that today. but. Uh, uh, if we save the whole thing, we don't want to do that. So what we want to do is actually set it just before the drop comes in and we can go mark in. There we go. And it saves the mark and then we can just keep going. We can play it until we're happy with the end of it. Boom, boom, ripple, 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 ripple like that. And then we can set mark out and then save and it'll only save the part that you mark. That can save an awful amount of uh, time when you uh, save it back. You're not saving any uh, redundant data. Oops, I just pressed save. I've had this before. Save directory is not writable. Um, and I found that last time, if I just took the SD card out and whacked it back in, that fixed it. So we might have a bug there. Yep, and you'll notice that it's slowly climbing up, climbing up, and saving all of those frames. So that'll take a minute or two. So you've just got to remember that with this uh, camera. If you're recording um, something here and then you press stop and then you forget to actually uh, play it back and save it, then it's not going to be saved. And if you press record again, it'll ask you uh, start recording anyway and discard the unsaved data in RAM, yes or no. So, yeah, at least it warns you. <laughs> just be careful. And let's see if I can uh, record my Belovo Accutron uh, watch with the little uh, vibrating uh, tuning fork coil in there. Let's give it a go using a uh, just a macro lens tape to the front because the thread is uh, ruined on this thing. But yeah, it's, you need a lot of light.
and I tried the HDMI, but I can't, uh, apart from uh, some uh, sort of off-screen uh, and a bit fuzzy-looking uh, Linux boot-up um, stuff, I couldn't actually get that to work. So, yeah, once again, this is prototype. It's like beta software, everything else. So I'm not sure if it's uh, actually supposed to be working in this particular prototype or not, but I'm sure the final product will. No worries. So there you have it, that's the Kronos uh, prototype, Kickstarter 1.4C is this uh, model, and hats off to Dave, this is absolutely brilliant, uh, to have the balls to do a Kickstarter for a high speed camera, an incredibly uh, complex device that the market is dominated by uh, you know the major uh, players, thing, a, a similar camera with this sort of specs, like I believe is like ten times, five to ten times the cost or something like that. So it's absolutely incredible that uh, he's going to be able to sell this thing for twenty five hundred bucks. The capability is absolutely amazing, and Dave is the real deal. Of course, this prototype is the real deal. There'll be lots of other prototypes uh, going out to other uh, blogs and uh, and review uh, sites and stuff like that. So unlike most most Kickstarters. Um, this one has actual real hardware and real functioning hardware. I mean, I could use this right now as it stands as the prototype for doing all my high speed uh, photography for the blog. It's absolutely brilliant. And of course, I did want to show you the obligatory shots of the, the exploding capacitors, but uh, outside now, a storm has come through, it's dark, it's raining, so yeah, I have to do that outside, so I'll save that for a future video. Until then, uh, you'll have to make do with some uh, birds I shot uh, this morning outside, very crude setup, I was just really doing it quick, but I got some amazing footage. And the amount of engineering that's gone into this is absolutely ridiculous. Probably an order of magnitude more than the next uh, most complex Kickstarter I've seen. I mean, just the hardware in this thing alone, designing that with all the uh, high-speed uh, capture stuff. And Dave's been working on this for like a decade. Various prototypes leading up to this. The amount of work in there, let alone the software interface, which actually works really, really well. He's put a lot of thought into it. Yeah, there are a few uh, quirks and uh, stuff like that, but I'm sure they'll be, uh, you know, fixed up. A lot of features that I thought were, um, uh, that should have been obvious and they weren't. Um, Dave has said, yeah, he's going to work on those and add them. And uh, one thing I'm really interested in is the run and gun mode, which is not in this prototype, where you can just hit the shutter button to start. It'll automatically uh, record and then save to SD card and then boom, you're ready to go again. Hence the, you know, the term run and gun. You can just go shoot. You don't have to dick around with playing it back and saving it manually and all that sort of stuff but that will be in an additional um, update for the firmware so very impressive some features I haven't tried all the remote uh, capability and stuff like that I haven't actually uh, tried that yet but um, this is an absolute winner folks if you want to get into high speed photography back this project I have no doubts Dave will deliver on this puppy because he's already delivered like a dozen uh, full on working prototypes like this he could go straight into production um, pretty much with what we see here. So very impressive. Yes, I will be doing a teardown on this and Dave has agreed to um, help out with that. So we're not sure of the logistics of how that's going to happen, but that uh, will be exciting. So the teardown with the designer, hopefully coming soon. That's brilliant. Thumbs up. Catch you next time.